Guys, am I with you now? <laughs> you gotta love new software. All right, guys, am I am I there now? Come on. Yes, no, maybe. Survey says. Come on, Hank, am I there? Can you hear me? Can you hear me now? Well, as soon as I get an acknowledgement from somebody, we're good. Cool. Well, welcome back to another. <laughs> it has been one heck of a day already. I have no idea. <sighs> but I'm going to stop long enough to do this. We actually have something over at the distribution center that I'm going to have that needs my immediate attention. So we're going to shorten this one up because the longer I stay here, the longer it's going to take for you to get your parts. So we're going to answer just a few questions and then I need to run over there and see if I can help the guys out because uh, we have a bit of an issue. But be that it is may, thank you for joining us and let me scroll up a little bit and we'll start answering some questions. Jared is asking me, how long does it take for parts you order to arrive? Good question. Depends on what you order, if we have it, or more importantly, if the manufacturer has it because we stock Good gosh, 1.6 million parts, but we can't always guess exactly what you're going to need for your year making model, but we do our best to do so. And if we don't, we get it from the manufacturer as quickly as possible. But that being said, if we have it in stock, even though our shipping's a little bit backed up, depending on which zone you're in, three to four days, so somewhere in that neighborhood. <clears throat> uh, Kerm is asking me, I have a YX140cc pit bike. Hmm. Looking at a Nibby 26 millimeter carburetor, what are your thoughts on the Nibby carburetors um, from the UK? Honestly, Kerm, I don't have any um, experience with the Nibby carburetors, so I can't really give you an opinion on that. But if they're used far and wide for that particular type of pit bike, as you will probably be able to find out quickly or not on the, uh, the interwebs, you would know if that is a decent carburetor. But I don't mind taking a peek at it and giving you my opinion of it next Friday. So how's that for a deal? All right, Figueroa, I don't speak Spanish. I'm a hack at best. So if the guys would translate your question to me, I can um, get it answered. It looks like you're, handing, you're asking something about a Honda 350 TRX. So chances are I'm probably going to know. So guys, if you would translate that for me and I can uh, maybe get that answer for him. Steve is saying, happy Friday, John. Happy Friday to you as well. All right, Joe's asked me, hello, sir. 2007 Honda CBR600RR front brake caliper rebuild. Should the pistons retract completely into the caliper housing after a brake application? So you're telling me, should you be able to put the pistons all the way back? Yes, they should go back at least even with the caliper surface themselves. Otherwise, you're not going to be able to get in your new pads. Now, there's a couple of different ways you can do this. Uh, on Honda says just to use a, uh, before you actually take the caliper, or if you, so you don't have to take the caliper off, just to use the screwdriver just to push the existing brake pad back, and that'll push the pistons back. Now, if you're not comfortable doing it that way, and you already have the caliper off, then there's been a couple of times I've used just a regular C-clamp to go in there and push the pistons in. Now the real trick is trying to grab multiple pistons on a caliper and get in, getting them to push back in uh, at the same rate. You may want to use just a small block of wood or a piece of metal to where you can bridge the distance, grab that with your C-clamp, and then compress them back in. <clears throat> Yeah, was I frozen or intensely staring at something? A little bit of both, but let's go with the frozen part. <laughs> All right, Joe, already got yours, and you're, you're welcome. Carter Miller, hey, John, I have a Honda 350 Rancher, and the ignition fuse is hot to the touch. Woo, will it blow after riding? What would cause that? If, if you've already got it started and that fuse is still getting hot, there is more than likely something going on in your wiring harness because that sounds like it's not quite enough to blow it, but it will eventually. It shouldn't get that warm. I mean, it really shouldn't. 
And that means just trying to exceed what its ampacity is. So chances are you've got a, uh, either a rub in your wiring harness somewhere or another piece is failing. Interesting one. I think it was on a, uh, a rancher as well. And I remember this particular unit, it was having something similar to what you're describing and it turned out that there was a heating element, something associated with the, uh, the float bowl. I can't remember exactly because it's been a couple of years, but it was starting to fail and that was causing too much current inside the, uh, the harness and it was eventually snapping a fuse. So you may want to see, if, see if, if your particular rancher has that particular option. That may be what's going on with there. Oh, uh, do, 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 do. All right, Jonathan's asking me, what do you think of the 2002 Yamaha Grizzly 660? I mean, uh, that was a groundbreaking machine. Um, it, it's, I like the 660 as long as you really maintain it correctly. They get a little particular, especially if you let the oil go a little too long. I've seen it score the, uh, the cam lobes and just generally make a mess out of things. Um, their cooling system is very particular because if it gets out of whack, it's going to overheat. But overall, it's a decent machine, even though it's starting to get a few years on it. Okay, low end gamers ask me, does back pressure affect how well an engine will start? Well, it, it could if you've got too much restriction going through your exhaust. I'm not sure what you, know, what you may have done to change the exhaust where that would happen, but it shouldn't make it any more difficult to get it to kick over. Hunter is asking me, um, how hot does a 1988 TRX 350 need to get to come on. I'm not sure what you're asking me in there. You're telling me, uh, asking me, how hot should it be before you start riding it? Well, if you just crank, crank one up and let it uh, come up to operating temp, I'd say maybe four to five minutes, depending on what the ambient temperature is. I usually don't have to let them you know, idle any longer than that, uh, regardless of what the temperature is. But then again, I'm in Southwest Georgia, so it's hot here basically all the time. But four or five minutes and you should be ready to roll. Okay, Hunter, he finished up the question. For the fan to come on. <sighs> on that one, I want to say it's 192, if I remember correctly. So somewhere in that neighborhood. It's, uh, I'm pretty sure it's sub 200, but it's right close to it. Um, if you would check your, your owner's manual, but I'm, I'm pretty sure it's right at that uh, 190 mark. Brandon asked me, what do you think caused all the crank failures on all the TRX 450Rs and carbureted model CRF uh, 450 bikes. I think a lot of that could be, and I'll probably get chastised for saying this, the fact that there for several years, Honda had, quote, quote, two separate oil areas. You had the crankshaft oil, then you had the transmission oil. And depending on, the, there, I believe it was a check valve in there some way, somewhere, sometimes it would either pump oil into one cavity or the other, starving the other side and overfilling the other. So that's what I think caused it, but that's just my opinion. I'm sure folks out there will disagree with me, but that's what I think caused it. All right, Kerms asked me, what are your thoughts on the Suzuki Ozark 250 ATV? It's a good mid-level machine. I mean, I'm, do I ride a lot of Suzukis? No, not that often. I've, I've mainly been either red, blue, or yellow, Honda Yamaha Kawasaki, but, or green, rather. But it's a good mid-level machine, and it's good for a mid-sized person, as long as you're not working it to death, and it should be a good ride for you. Ian's asked me, I have a 2010 YFC450X. The injector keeps getting clogged. The tank has been flushed. All seals are tight. Any ideas? All right, have you checked the screen that goes into the bottom of your um, fuel tank pump? Because if it is cut or dislodged, or you know, not connected or worn out, it may be pulling in debris from inside of your tank, or actually if it's breaking down, it may be the culprit going up through the system and then stopping up the, uh, the injector itself. So I would say, look at that little filter. It's actually a pad about this wide on the bottom of the, uh, fuel, in the fuel pump itself and see if it's needing to be replaced. I'm pretty sure you can order that one separately from the, uh, the fuel pump itself. Okay, a couple more guys, and I am going to have to run out the door here in a second. 
Carl, Carl Reese, any tips, advice for, I'm going to strip down my 110cc Moto Rama Blazer Quad. That sounds like one of those uh, Chinese companies. Um, units to give it a good clean and spray the frame. Never stripped a quad bike before, but want to give it a go. Well, by all means, Carl, go for it. I didn't really read a question in there, so I'm going to go on. Um, keep on going. Carl is saying, uh, yes, what it, weird that it will still run after blowing a fuse. It'll probably run, but it, you probably doubt if it's the main fuse, like maybe, but then it probably won't restart again, would be my bet. Uh, Daniel's asking me, what do you think about deactivating the AIS secondary air system on a Raptor 700? I uh, deactivated mine, and now it's throwing flames out of my exhaust system. All right, well, I think you just answered your question. It's evidently sending unburned fuel. Instead of recirculating it through the AIS system, it's throwing it out through your exhaust and uh, turning your exhaust into a blowtorch. So, <laughs> if... If that, if, if that makes it more fun to ride behind you at night, then you know, go with it. It's probably not going to hurt the machine, although you're probably going to have to repack your exhaust sooner than later because uh, that's eventually going to wear it out. All right, guys, I know that I'm cutting this one short, but my attention is really across the street, and that's where I need to go because if we don't get that up and running, it's going to slow down us getting product to you, and we don't want that. So with that, I'm going to sign off early, go ch change shirts, put on my Superman shirt, and go over there and see if I can help them out. Once again, thanks for coming by, spending just a few minutes with me before I have to run out the door. Everybody have, everybody have a great weekend, a great week, and we will see you again, God willing, on next Friday at 3. See you all later.